Hey, Chip. And this is Contentment Channel. Yay. <laughs> so this is an update. It is February 14th. We'll probably put this out two or three weeks from now, but hey, that's okay. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy V Day. <laughs> well, so we've been busy doing quite a few things, suffering through this horrific winter weather. Just kidding. It hasn't really been that bad. Um, but first and foremost thing is we finally have dumpy fixed we got the brakes all back in finally the sad part though is we're gonna have to work on the front eventually but at least it's drivable and safe mm -hmm. um, we've been trying to figure out ways to secure a garden area if you will because it's so windy here obviously the Sun can be damaging to more delicate crops like tomatoes and such so we've been looking at different hoop house type designs um, adding on green a greenhouse uh, just trying to find a way to secure the plants inside maybe a little fence because any kind of open area the plants will sustain quite a bit of wind damage here um, <clears throat> I ordered some seeds not from everybody's most popular favorite place to order them from. Baker. No, I'm not. No. Um, I ordered them from another place. We ordered lots of different things. I can't even remember now. But anyway, so those are those have arrived. We just need to figure out where we're going to put our garden. Still, we're a long way from even beginning to start uh, seeds indoors, even because you're looking at. Again, Mother's Day is when most people around here say is safe to really get your stuff outside in the ground because you can have freezing temperatures and frost up until the middle of May. But if you have a greenhouse, they say that the time to get them in the ground is around Earth Day. So, like uh, April 21st or yeah, 20th or whenever that whatever is. It is. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so, uh, so yes, yeah, so glad that Dumpy's fixed and that's over. I've uh, been having trouble with the Dodge pickup though. The roads out here are really hard on vehicles as you can imagine. And uh, so, I mean, so far since Christmas, the Dodge has had the uh, bearing for the differential replaced. It has had uh, a flat tire. It has had the radiator replaced. <clears throat> it's had the front left wheel bearing replaced. It needs to have the shocks or front shocks replaced. And now, both rear wheel bearings are out so it's in the shop again being replaced <laughs> so that that's the dodge has been a challenge i mean it's just the, like i said these roads out here are hard on vehicles and uh, so it's getting rather frustrating because it seems like i spend most of my time fixing uh vehicles instead of getting the things done that we want to do uh, which we'll talk about in a minute but then also i've been working part-time for that potato farm that I worked during harvest, they asked me to come back for a little while and help them uh, get ready for planting. So I've been doing that, and uh, I, somehow I, I damaged my ankle. This weekend, was hoping to start on a project, but uh, my ankle and my foot are just killing me. The thing is, I don't know how I injured it. I woke up one morning and it was hurting. So, but it's hard to get around, and that, that kind of stuff really frustrates me uh, when, you know, I have the time set aside to do it, and I can't do it. Uh, so, but we'll get there, so. And um, as pretty much everyone in the entire world knows, this Valentine's Day weekend and President's Day weekend is this winter polar vortex. <laughs> so, we here... This is the in this area. This is going to be the coldest Valentine's Day, maybe with wind chills. I don't know, but anyway, On this record. is a, yeah. This is some kind of record Valentine's Day, maybe with wind chills, maybe with temperatures at temperatures. I don't know, but uh, we do have some snow here. Um, the mountain areas around are getting pretty soft in, but of course we never get as much snow as those areas. Yeah. But again, it's also cold here, but not. But the cold here is not unusual for people, <laughs> mm -hmm. and people don't get worried and so it's concerned and freaked out. <laughs> it's typical here, but I know people in the center of the country right now, particularly in Texas, Oklahoma, are uh, really, you know, in shock uh, over the amount of snow and cold that they're getting. 
it's uh it's the way it is you know we just think about it and smile yeah i went i went on the road condition map oh and it, and it has all of the snow plows around that was a really fun little uh website to go look at the state has like 500 billion snow plows i'm kidding about that but every, it looks like there are snow plows every mile everywhere in this entire state right now but anyway so next. <laughs> so we've got some family in town mm -hmm. and later today we're going to go up to the hot springs and enjoy soaking in the hot springs for a little while maybe that'll help your foot maybe i hope mm -hmm. so and then uh we'll have a nice dinner later on and um then coming up uh, we have several projects one will be to build a screen porch off mm -hmm. of the uh, end of the house here because with the uh, i mean those of you who follow our channel know we fight wind constantly uh, it seems during this time of the year uh, beginning in you know late winter early spring and going all the way into like midsummer uh, winds can be hellacious out here and so we wanted a way to number one get out of the sun without going indoors uh, and then also a way to mitigate the uh, the effects of the wind and things like that plus last summer the bug situation wasn't as terrible as it was the previous the you know previous summer to last summer mm -hmm. and so the screen porch will allow us to be able to spend time outside in the evenings when mm -hmm. it's nice and cool yeah. and instead of having to just fight, fight bugs mosquitoes and mosquitoes and things so i'm really excited about that <clears throat> um we have a you know you guys have seen we have this little uh fireplace thing that we're going to put out in there i think it's going to be a nice little outdoor area i think it will and uh you know regarding the bugs if the mosquitoes are and the stable flies are really bad this year uh that'll work out great for us because what we'll do is we'll go inside of the screens <laughs> screen house wait for all the mosquitoes to collect on the screen and just spray <laughs> like that really helps but i know it it, it our, helps his mind it helps my mind <laughs> yes i mean the, our first summer out here building the shouse last year year before last year no two summers two summers ago um we uh we fought stable flies and mosquitoes like you wouldn't believe uh to the point where we went through probably a case maybe two cases of you know bug bug killer and uh i mean literally they would just hover in swarms above the vehicles above the shouse and i just take a can get up wind of them take a can and just wipe a whole just hundreds of them out at once uh, it worked great so last summer wasn't as bad uh, regarding the bugs and hopefully that was due to the abatement that we put in place the summer before but we'll see um and hopefully that abatement will continue but either way i hate bugs and i'm going to kill them every mosquitoes i'm going to kill them every chance i get another thing that we have going i already mentioned the greenhouse we've got to figure out a way to kind of help do that um, another thing we have is we received some more free materials, um, some corrugated metal. Yeah, you know, like a propanol roofing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with that material, we're going to build some sort of loafing shed. Again, the wind is a problem, the sun is a problem, and so we're considering <clears throat> adding on a loafing shed type design to the north side of the shouse so we can have one wall already in com you know complete and then not have to spend as much on materials mm -hmm. and things like that we really want to get on with the building of the house but we realize that there are things that we have to have in place first i mean the house we thought would be sufficient to do it but we realize with the wind the sun the bugs all those kinds of things we need to have a few more things in place before before we can really become productive um, the loafing shed will help uh, get vehicles or Dyna or something like that out of the wind so that we can work on them if we need to. Uh, Dyna, for instance, I need to remove her transmission uh, away from the engine because she's developed a, a pretty good transmission leak that I need to fix before I can go on using her because she's using a lot of transmission fluid. And uh, so I need a place out of the wind where I can do that because. Mm -hmm. With this wind and blowing sand, you know, 
things that are covered with oil and grease, the moment you separate them and expose them to the wind, they're covered in sand and dust and stuff like that. So you got to be able to, when you're working on vehicles like that, you got to be able to keep it clean. And uh, loafing shell will go a long way toward that. It will also provide a shady spot, I hope, to be able to do things like some, um, you know, wood milling and stuff like that we need for the house and other things. And these are the kinds of projects we can still do before it gets warm enough. We need to start doing our adobe bricks, which is something I plan to start as soon as the weather begins to cooperate. We can't, it can't be freezing and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so it takes, I don't know how long to cure them, but that's going to be kind of my thing. We have to build a mold deal for them and all of that, but at least that's going to be something I'm going to have to start doing pretty quickly once the weather starts cooperating and we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with the uh, straw bale. We can't go and purchase a bunch of straw bale not having a place to kind of keep it out of the, the rain and such. Mm -hmm. And again, if we needed to, the length of this loafing shed would be sufficient to maybe kind of help keep some of those materials too mm -hmm. so those are the that's the reason why we really haven't started going mm -hmm. full scale on getting the house well and then there's also that free building mm -hmm. you the prior video about our getting a free building there's a there's a quonset style building not very far from here that we hope to get taken down this spring and moved over here and re-erected and that would provide a good shelter mm -hmm. for the for the straw bales too um, and other things it would make a great shop uh, mm -hmm. for all the things we need to do mm -hmm. regarding the house. Yeah, it would be um, great to have that. Mm -hmm. So we have a whole bunch of stuff coming up. And, uh, you know, we've got that greenhouse that we want to build. We've got the screen porch we've got to get done. We've got the, uh, we've got to move or install a water line that goes from the well over to the house pad where the house will be before we can install that gabion wall. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's going to pass underneath it um and then you know like i said fixing dyna also do you want to tell them about the lumber oh so you guys probably are aware that lumber prices are just going through the roof right now the last time we priced a two by four stud they were like eight bucks or something like that and so almost 10 now yeah and that's at the cheapest place in the in the area so we contacted the forestry service and we told them, you know, we were looking for certain st sizes of trees, lumber and stuff like that because we wanted to uh, mill our own wood. And fortunately, we found out some pretty good news. Like, I don't know, I don't know the details because I don't know like amounts but you can buy one tree for like 10 cents or something. Mm. I don't know, it's really, really cheap. Well, and now you know why it was so important for us and why we're so relieved that Dumpy is running and has good brakes because we need to take Dumpy into the mountains. Uh, the forester I spoke with here locally said, yes, we can harvest our own trees and mill our own lumber to build our home, uh, which is kind of cool. A romantic idea, but a whole bunch of work. But even with all the work and the going into the mountain, it's still gonna be considerably less probably really um, I think but I don't know. yeah so anyway I you know in talking with the uh, forester I let him know that we were gonna that we thought we were gonna need about 40 uh, trees mature trees uh, that uh, and that would give us enough dimensional lumber to frame out the parts of the house uh, that will need it and, of course they go out they choose the trees that are about 13 inches in diameter or a little larger um, they mark them for you and then they tell you where they're at and you go out and harvest them but you're responsible for felling them for bucking yarding all that kind of stuff and so that's why it's so nice to have dumpy a working dump truck that can handle several logs at a time we'll just install we have a 9,000 pound winch that will install on dumpy and just pull those logs right up on um, haul them back here and then mill them um but you know i asked him and by the way these are all um beetle peel yeah engelman spruce trees that likely have likely or lodgepole pine that have been uh killed by beetles and haven't been standing dead that long so <clears throat> they're also mostly dry so you know stacking and drying won't be too much of an issue won't take too long to get that done Anyway, I asked him, I said, you know, by the way, how much will this cost for this lumber? And uh, he said, well, 
you know, that's about uh, 13 or 14 CCF, something that cubic feet. I forget what that means. But uh, he said, uh, you know, it could, be, it could be pretty expensive. And I said, well, how much would it be? And he, while I was on the phone, I could hear his little calculator going. And he said, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, it's going to be a little pricey. You know, for those 40 trees, it's going to cost you somewhere between 150 and 250 dollars. And I said, "Ooh, <laughs> ooh, you're breaking me, <laughs> breaking my bank here." But when one eight foot two by four stud is ten bucks, and you know, and you have the equipment to do your own milling and things like that, it really just becomes labor and gas and and that kind of stuff. So uh, thankful to have everything, most everything we need. Uh, to do the logging and uh, whatever's left over whatever slash we have we can take uh, whatever you know off cutting is left over we can use for firewood so you know I it's not a bad deal for us it's just gonna be a lot of work um, but yeah we've got so much stuff coming up and uh, it seems like there are just not enough days in the week to do it especially when your ankle is sprained and it's you just hobbling around can't really do anything you have to stay off it but, uh, so those are the things we've got coming up. <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> That's enough, isn't it? <gasps> anyway. So, hey, uh, you know, pray for us. We're going to be very, hopefully, we're going to be very, visit, very busy people uh, here uh, working around contentment pretty soon. And... Um, uh, moving along trying to get things done. So I feel like uh, we've spent a lot of time spinning our wheels Since we've been here working on vehicles getting stuff fixed You know recovering from this uh, break-in and theft uh, You know just all the things that have uh, hit us in the past year and um, So I'm really in I'm really encouraged and excited um, To think that we're going to be able to you know move on and do things I don't like that I have to build a loafing shed. I don't like that I have to build a screen porch. I don't like that I have to do those things that are not directly related to building the home. But I do see the value in them uh, and how helpful they'll be to us going forward. So, really looking forward to greenhouse. Mm -hmm. See what we can do with it. So. Happy Valentine's Day, Rolla. Are you trying to kiss me? Right here. I don't want to be there. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, folks, happy Valentine's Day. We'll catch you on the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and all that jazz. Bye. Bye. <laughs>